Good morning. ये सुप्रभात सो इनिशियल प्लान वॉज टू गो फॉर द जॉइंट्स टूडे बट देन आई रियलाइज दिस टॉपिक कार्टिलेज राइट प्रेटी कंफ्यूजिंग टॉपिक सो लेट्स लेट्स फर्स्ट टेक द कार्टिलेज बिकॉज देन विल बी रेडी विद द बोन्स एंड द कार्टिलेज एंड देन इट वुड बी अ प्लेजर टू लर्न अबाउट द जॉइंट्स राइट सो विल टेक द जॉइंट्स टूमोरो एंड टूडे लेट्स डाइव इन टू द कार्टिलेज ना वॉट विल डू इज will not learn the cartilage only from the anatomy perspective will actually look at it in in bit more depth so there would be the combination of say biochemistry there will be combination of some clinical conditions there will be say some some of the collagen synthesis will will talk even about the histology part so what would really happen is that it would be like a complete combination so when when actually you will see the see the slides in histology right you will find it very comfortable plus you will also know that okay these are the type of questions which they ask in any of the competitive exam especially say usmle or neat right or the next so yes that's how it would be very helpful to you so let's start with the cartilages that's why i just wrote cartilages right not only the anatomy but so many other things and as usual will will not leave anything in doubt fine so here is we start with cartilage yes one email was that why are you not replying about uh, our emails no it's not so that i am not replying but yes since two days i'm i'm replying hardly 10 10 12 emails right few of you must have received my answer just before few few minutes i replied them in the morning right so i'll reply and all those questions i am not taking right now because yes it was it was like we we sometimes spend say 15 20 minutes into in replying of those questions you know but the thing is topic should not be compromised so i'll try to answer yes and even all those sensitive emails which you have sent yes i'll try to answer almost all of them just give me 2 3 days so moving on to our first topic right as such the topic is cartilage but why why i said first topic because they will be discussing some extra things also into it so basically what cartilage is nothing but it is a connective tissue right so bone was also a connective tissue true right but when we say bone so then the picture is very clear ki yes that's a bone right but when it comes to connective tissue there is confusion right so let's clarify it remember all the conditions which will be coming across the in the bone the way it was osteo over here it would be chondro right it would be chondro again a greek word right so things would be related like this now when we say connective tissue the speciality of this right like our brain map let's divide it into that it is the combination of there would be cells plus a very unique thing there would be few fibers right when it comes to fibers to so will call them again the chondro and cells cells of cartilage so we'll call them chondro chondro sites easy as that right chondro sites cells of cartilage but when it comes to fibers we have got the option we have got two type of fibers one the white fiber second yellow fiber right just simple as that right then we'll be going into more detail what are the characteristic etc but but simply speaking white fiber and yellow fiber now all these things right cells you take few cells you put the fibers in between but then there has to be some glue which is connecting the entire thing and that glue which is called as the matrix right one question which was asked in the email also my health well it is better it is better still so in the morning it was bit 
plus minus but uh, then i had a nice walk run for about 10 kilometers today feeling better much better thank you so chondrocytes plus fibers and all of them they are packed into a matrix right that is what is called as the matrix matrix means nothing but various cells and then then some liquid is poured so that all of them they remain into that bowl right simply so it is this matrix is gel like so it holds everything it is not ge double l it is just gel right gel gel like matrix and it is gel like matrix now technically speaking we just can't say like that okay it is like a gel they'll say gel means what right so you have to rem remember one keyword that it is rich in mucopolysaccharide muco poly saccharide the moment this word used to come right honestly we don't like it right yeah with this mucopolysaccharide let's simplify it see saccharide means what sugar right saccharide means sugar now these these sugar molecules right they are they are very romantic they don't stay alone so they they form there is a couple right so they form a couple and all these couples when they they stand in a line single line single row and they form a long chain holding their hands with each other it is nothing but called as the gluco it is just called as the mucopolysaccharide simply speaking one sugar s1 s2 s1 s2 s1 s2 so we'll call them what disaccharide di means two right di is not this right that is different so this is this is called as disaccharide right so this is called as the disaccharide and these disaccharides they are joined with each other in the form of and they form a long chain that long chain so now technically we can speak that it is nothing but long chain of disaccharides Thick, long chain of disaccharides that is what is called as the mucopolysaccharide and then there is another name given to it and this thing can be asked sometimes remember it's like gag right gag this first g that is glycose a is for i mean glycosamine glycans right glycosamine glycans this is just another name right another name like a gangster right it has got this mps mucopolysaccharide right it's a simple name and this is like a gangster's name right so glycosamine glycans fine you will find them rich rich in mucous membrane synovial fluid and our today's topic cartilage right so it is not so that that they are present only in cartilage they are present right they, let's write it here right they are present by the way this would be our our indication symbol for present right present mm -hmm. what i'm doing spelling p-r-e-s-e-n-t okay present will use this so obviously this would be absent okay so it is present in mucus right we talked about it, mucus then synovial fluid you know very well that synovial fluid the fluid which is around the joints right and the cartilage so basically cartilage now we know that it is a structure right which is a sort of connective tissue now going slightly into more detail because otherwise those sugar molecules right they will start feeling bad that you never mentioned good about us so those mps mucopolysaccharides right these are the mucopolysaccharides divide it into again two parts 
1 chondroitin chondroitin sulfate right the moment i say chondroitin immediately you will know that they, we are talking about cartilage thick because the word chondro right the word chondro that is our chief guest today right that chondro so this chondroitin sulfate that means definitely this will be present in cartilage and you are right this is for the cartilage right gag gag is nothing but it is another name of mps mucopolysaccharide right glycosamine glycans is another name right this is nothing but another name so we can say aka aka you know that right also known as right also known as that's it difficulty in understanding uh where 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 is the problem should not be very difficult because see these are couples sugar couples holding their hands with each other so simply long chains of disaccharide disaccharide means two sugars two sugars right and it forms a simple long chain glycosamine glycans is just another name right technically they both are same it is just another name simply new name another name so in few books you'll find glycosamine glycans in somewhere you'll find mucopolysaccharide basically same nothing new and what exactly are we talking about we are talking about that in case of cartilage there are cells over here there are cells which are which say these are cells right these are cells correct these cells right these are chondrocytes and then there would be there would be few fibers right chalo that is also fine fibers but then these fibers they are lonely cells they are lonely how to combine them right we have to put them into into a matrix into a gel so there comes the gel right it is the gel which fills this entire structure right and this green color that is nothing but gel well this is just for our understanding right the real color we'll see very soon but this is how that's the gel so we have got three components cell chondrocytes various fibers white and yellow and what will they do we'll just see and then there is gel but what exactly is this gel this gel is mucopolysaccharide right it's a chemical simply take it like a chemical and it's another name is like a gangster's name right that is glycosamine glycans they both are same and they are two sugar disaccharide in a linear chain you can say long linear linear means straight right obviously in in reality when you'll see so it is not absolutely like a single scale like means they they go like this right fine where are they present they are present into mucus synovial fluid and this is where we are interested in cartilage right now mucopolysaccharides they are not just one type right but there are two basic types straight away we went to the second type right? because it is the chondroitin sulfate it is chondroitin sulfate which is present in cartilage now this is a tough structure so which tough structures you you expect in the body well the toughest one to was bone you know so yes it is present in bones also tendon very tough right so yes it is present in tendon also and this chondroitin sulfate is most abundant most abundant this is maximum amongst all other types now when we are talk about chondroitin sulfate so then we must talk about that which one is the second one that second one is called as the heparin sulfate or heparin right so we can see like it is the heparin sulfate now right now we'll not be going into more detail of it just remember that this one is very important for cell proliferation at the end 
it just remind me yeah most abundant in human body right human body right most abundant in human body right? maximum this hyperon sulfate is for cell proliferation cell growth right and it plays important role in what is called as the retinol that is the way cell to cell attachment one cell is connected to second cell third cell now see these are the these are the collagen as the age increases the collagen starts giving its way right there is less and less collagen it is age dependent so after some time if person is not taking proper food proper diet improper exercise circulation is less then what really leads this cell proliferation it starts breaking up right and and that thing leads to various type of wrinkles and then gradually they keep on increasing so this is nothing but but the problem in the collagen right collagen fibers so here just remember that this heparin sulfate it is for cell proliferation and it is again present on cell surfaces plus right now this much information is more than enough for us right <coughs> Now, when we say that we, we talked about that these are the long chains, right? These are the long chains of disaccharides, correct? Disaccharides. Obviously, this is a keyword. Do remember it, right? It is a keyword. Now, when we know that this is important, right? And we say that disaccharide means it is two sugars. Today, I'll be giving you some extra information also. It is absolutely fine if you forget it. No problems. But if you remember, right, they are, these are like a like few questions which, uh, which have been asked into these competitive exams. Right? Because over there, some of the typical questions, they pop up from nowhere. nowhere right? You, you, if you try to search for the answers, you will, you'll be surprised that where exactly are they. So that's why some of these information, let's remember right now without any tension, even if we forget, no problems. But these two sugars, what are the name of these sugars? One is the easier name. Second is, is very vichitra, ajeeb name, right? One is the amino sugar, right? As such, these names are simple. But we'll make it more simple when we'll be talking about biochemistry and when we'll be learning in detail about sugar. At that time, it will make a complete sense, right? But right now, we are talking about this sugar for a very different reason, right? Come to that in just under a minute. So, one is the amino sugar and second is uronic sugar, uronic, right? Then, in the first look, it looks like name of the dinosaur, right? Uronic sugar. But when they both form, when, when they both combine, it leads to a molecule, right? Molecule. This molecule is what is called as the polar. Now, when it is polar, so that means this suddenly becomes very romantic, right? And it will start attracting water. Right? It has got tremendous affection, tremendous attraction for water. So, this thing will attract water. So, obviously, such substance which attracts water is very nice for two purposes. One, it is a very good lubricant. The body tells that we will be using it as a lubricant. So, where should we put this thing? Yeah, put it into joints, right? Our gearbox, put it into there so it will keep on doing as a good lubricant. Second, because when the water is absorbed, so it becomes quite soft, right? But as such, those fibers, they are strong. So, can you really feel that it is more or less like a shock absorber? Shock absorber, right? Because in even in your vehicles, if you see, those shock absorbers, they are not only strong, but at the same time, they are a bit flexible so that they take away the shock. So, it would be acting as a shock absorber. Which sugar combines to form molecular? These two sugars, uronic sugar 1 
and the amine sugar 2. These two sugars, right? So, 1 plus 2. So, that's what they form the pair and it leads to molecular polar, right? So, this is like a shock absorber, right? Lubricant, lubricant means which acts like a oil, right? Say, for example, synovial fluid, right? Synovial fluid, the fluid which is acting like a oil in the gearbox. So, that is what is called, called as a lubricant. Shock absorber, right? It acts as a shock absorbent. This shock absorber, say, when we'll be, when we'll be watching, say, this is intervertebral vertebra. In between is what? In between is the intervertebral disc. So, this is, say, say, let's say, number one. This is number two. So, in between, in between, this is what is called as the intervertebral disc, right? Now, if you really rotate, right, you remove the L1 and then you watch from the top. So, if this is the intervertebral disc, so then central portion, central portion, which is called as the nucleus pulposus, right, pulposus. See how good the name is. Name itself is telling that it is very pulpy, right, which is very pulpy, this one. That's what is acting as shock absorber right so lubricant yes it helps in friction that's uh, that's right you are right and uh, yeah works as a grease see it's a good one huh? so it works as a grease it helps in in against friction yeah it helps in uh, eliminating the friction very right and shock absorber right it takes away the shock the pressure it absorbs the shock so that nucleus pulposus, that is where it is, its name, pulp-like, right? And exactly when this nucleus pulposus, when it loses water, so when you'll be, I'll show you the MRI spine, right? The normal and abnormal. Now in, in MRI, we'll be watching T1 weighted image and T2 weighted image, right? Long T, long T1, long T2, short T1, short T2. So in this, why it is said that when you will watch the MRI of, of the spine, right, you can literally, I promise that just on the first day only, you will be able to diagnose that, okay, this nucleus pulposus has got less water. Yes, you will be able to see that. Right? You will be able to interpret that. I, I, I should say, you will be able to interpret that. All you need to understand is, you know, high tide and low tide, right? Samudra mein, right? When it is high tide and when it is low tide. But if you can understand that, you will be able to understand MRI within half an hour, right? Very simple, but that nuclear physics is superlative interesting. And when you put it into practice, when you put it into your interpretation, you'll be able to say, yes, fluid content is decreased, right? When you'll compare M1, that is T1 with T2, and then I'll be telling you in slightly more detail what is long T1, long T2, short T1, short T2, then it would be crystal clear. Coming back to our topic, so this is the nucleus pulposa. So basically, it is like polar molecule, right? Yeah, during the slip disc, pulposa comes out. That's right, Om. You are right. right. So here, it attracts water and that is what leads to, say, lubrication and the shock absorb, right? Two important things which we must know about cartilage. When we say cartilage, these cartilage, they don't have any blood supply, right? They don't have blood supply. Now, in our body, every connective tissue, everything is live. So, it would require, require blood supply and it would require nerve supply. But no, in this case, right, cartilage has got no, no blood supply, right? Cartilage has got no nerve supply. So, what's the result? 
because of this when there is no nerve supply so obviously it would become insensitive insensitive now how is this thing important that if it is insensitive well think it this way <coughs> think it this way for whole life we keep on moving our joints right we never care for that that cartilage that articular cartilage it is not bone to bone which is which is moving but in between there are cartilage these are the vertebral vertebras but in between there are vertebral intervertebral discs so they are preventing those two vertebras to strike with each other now when the posture is bad right and as you very rightly said that when the disc prolapse right when the menisci menisci is that in the knee joint when those cartilages they are broken eroded when the cartilage breaks there is no pain the pain comes when those bone to bone strikes because periosteum right periosteum is having that sensitivity right it is having that sensitivity so that's where pain starts till that point so we keep on inserting our joints without any problem we sit like this and this and all all those right and which are vertebras right they take keep on taking the pressure incorrect why it is said that your spine should be absolutely in its most natural form the beautiful s shaped curve right because this thing will keep your body in in its absolutely perfect position even when you run right there is a stance if you run by that way you will be able to run for a very long distance right you must have seen that many people they run like this this right the whole body is swinging think it like that when the whole body is swinging so much of extra energy is getting utilized right ear is a cartilage then it is sensitive but ear is sensitive because on that there is a skin right the skin is the super sensitive that's why but you remove the skin and then you drill whatever you want to do with the cartilage cartilage won't complain right cartilage won't complain it is yes you are right this this pinna pinna it is called as the or the auricle our ear right will come to that but yes it is sensitive but due to skin chalo now supply is not there that is granted but uh, what about the nutrition because in that case it will be it make it a dead thing this nutrition that is via diffusion right nutrition is via diffusion right it is via diffusion diffusion into the matrix so it is like that via blood right that those those nutrition they get absorbed into the matrix it is not the blood which is entering or there is some artery which is giving them right it is like like those semi permeable membrane which will pass through yeah we'll come to we are coming to that ear cartilage just give me a mi minute right right yeah in cornea also it is like that right but they get the nutrition via diffusion just those these are like semi permeable membranes and through that the nutrients they cross right so not the real blood is entering but the nutrients they cross <coughs> sorry 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 so in case of bone in case of bone right we use we learned yesterday the word periosteum peri means surrounding osteum means bone so we call this as periosteum right periosteum so today we have got the cartilage this is the cartilage so there is something which is surrounding the cartilage and we want to give it a name use the same principle so what name surrounding the cartilage let's go back to over that chondro so peri chondrium right peri chondrium so peri chondrium is nothing but the layer which is surrounding the membrane which is surrounding the cartilage now this membrane is not present everywhere right and there is a clinical thing associated with it this perichondrium this perichondrium is this perichondrium is very important for the regeneration right for the regeneration of cells so in case if there is any damage so this perichondrium will help and will regenerate this is a fibrous membrane right 
Now, the moment we say fibrous membrane, that means it's tough, right? But not as tough as bone. So, if you want to give bone as number one, cartilage will be number two, right? In the toughness. And just remember one and two, right? Bone is number one, cartilage is number two. And you have learned so many things just by giving this number, coming to that. Okay? So, this is the cartilage. One one point which we must mention over here that this fibrous membrane that is perichondrium it is not present it is absent it is absent in articular cartilage right absent in articular cartilage so when we talk about articular cartilage very simple articular cartilage means something which is which is round forming a joint. We have talked about that when we, that this was like our bone, so then that bone was covered with, with an articular cartilage, right? And then there was another bone and the whole thing was packed, right? And that was what forming the, <coughs> sorry, that was what, what was forming the knee joint or the synovial joint. So this articular cartilage, it is not having perichondrium, right? So that's why if any damage occurs to these cartilage, they will not be repaired that easily, right? Repair, so that's the thing. So then will these cartilages survive? Yes, they will definitely survive. But if they are damaged, so then repairing would be insufficient. So know this thing very well, the why it is said that when you do exercise, your proper form is important so that you don't get these cartilages which are not capable of absolute good repair, right? These cartilages, they, have, they are very tough. They sustain so much of insult, but there is a limit, right? So that's the thing. Now see, when we talk about cartilage, when we talk about cartilage, we, we learned one word, chondrocytes, right? Chondrocytes. So, chondro, that is the cartilage. Cytes means these are the cells. And one fine day when these chondrocytes, they die, right? It comes also, there is no supply. Huh, that, obviously, yes. So, chondrocytes, when, they, when there is calcification, Right, when there is calcification. So that calcification is what? These which are chondrocytes, they die. Right? Right? It is this die. So that is where they will be replaced by bone. Right? They will be replaced, replaced by bony bone-like structure. Right? Bone-like. Because it is not exactly the bone. Because it's not so that those osteocytes enter, right? But when the calcification is there, so there is so much of deposition of calcium, so it becomes like a bone-like tissue. And that becomes, leads to restricted movement. <coughs> so to make things still more clear, say in case of bone and in case of cartilage, over and above, other differences, few differences, they are absolutely in surgical procedure if articular cartilages are damaged. Well, that's that's why the surgical procedures, they are so important, right? You just can't damage, you can, can't just damage the cartilages or you can, just can't damage the blood vessels, right? Some of the blood vessels. But say head of the, head of the femur, right? As such, if you see that when that artery enters inside, there is such a rich blood supply. So even if you if you put a nail, right, when, when you want to repair the fracture, you put a nail, you put a plate, no problems. Obviously, when you are putting the nail, when the nail is passing, it will be damaging so much of vessels, micro vessels. Nothing happens. That's fine. That's fine. Right? Because blood supply is so rich. In case of bone and cartilage, we know that bone is hard, right? Mm, not a big rocket science. You know? Bone is having calcium salts, right? Calcium salts, very true. 
Bone is having rich blood supply. That's right. Bone is having rich nerve supply. That's why when the injury bone is injured, it is painful. <coughs> Technically, ossification and calcification, they are different. Calcification is when the calcium, calcium ions, they are laid in large amount. Ossification is actually bone formation. Right? That's why I made it clear that when the calcification occurs into cartilage, it becomes like a bone but not really the bone. On x-ray, it would look like because its density would be increased. So, it will look like bone-like calcification. Right? Bone-like tissue. Bone-like tissue but not really the bone. Technically speaking, ossification is formation of bone. Right? Does it affect the cartilage? Well, can't tell. Is this reliable to this? Be just a general. Ha ha, no problem. See, when you replace something with the body part with steel, total knee replacement. Say, for example, when it is done. Say, natural is natural. Now, all those things collectively, they are called as the prosthesis. Prosthesis. So, any of the prosthesis, it will try to mimic the whole thing as if it is like a natural thing. But no way. No way it can it can compete with the with the natural efficiency of the body, right? All these processes, artificial things, they are kept. Say for example, those we talk we were talking about that in ears, right? Malleus incus tapes, those auricles are there. Now now even those artificial bones they are created and they are implanted with with nice electronic devices. But can they beat the normal hearing? No way, no way. Will that person be able to hear with that clarity with which you are hearing? No way. Right? But then because that person who was unable to hear anything, you give him some sound, then you put those, those hearing aids, at least his life will be tolerable. Right? But, but natural is natural. That's why I always say try to preserve your original spare parts. Right? Don't let them go bad. Right? That includes brain also. So, calcium salts are there, blood supply is rich, nerve supply is rich. Against that, when we talk about cartilage, well, it is relatively soft. So, that's why we'll use the word, it is firm, right? No, it is not absolutely soft, it is firm. Calcium salts, no, no, they are not present in normal cartilage, right? If it is there, so then we call it calcification. Blood supply, no, no. Nerve supply, no, no, right? <coughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. So, this is like a basic difference. Now, let's talk about slightly in more detail. We were telling cartilage, cartilage, cartilage. Right? Periostom is covered with cartilage which has chondrocytes and cartilage covered with perichondrium. You are right, Siddhi. You are right. Very right. Now, this cartilage it is not just one type of cartilage, right? This is where I will take you on a small journey of one more substance which is called as the collagen. We already talked about it. It is this collagen, right? Collagen is that, that basic raw material. As such, so there are almost 25, 27, almost 28 different type of collagens. But these collagens, they are like type 1, type 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way. But at MBBS level, at least you should be clear about the 5, type 1 to type 5 collagens. Right? Now, these collagens, they will give you the complete clarity about how they are distributed. Because rest of the collagens, some of them, they are just taking part or they are as a supportive thing. But these top 5 collagens, they are maximum. We will come to that. First, let's talk about cartilage, right? Cartilage, yeah, most abundant protein, very right. So, highline cartilage, right? Highline cartilage. This is one. The second type of cartilage is fibrocartilage, right? Fibrocartilage, right? And the third type of cartilage, which is called as the elastic cartilage. Elastic cartilage. At times I feel that the names, whosoever has given the name, right, must have given with so much of brain. 
seriously <coughs> the name the fibro right the name itself is it looks like a gunda's name na right so this is the strongest right it is the strongest means the name is like a dada's name right dada giri's name fibro right elastic itself tells that so flexible it's so flexible so this is flexible right this high line this high line is the cartilage which is present at so many places <coughs> this is very shiny right very very shiny fibro the name is like gunda so we call it strongest right elastic name itself is telling it is flexible but this high line such such crazy word let's go back to over to to greece right so in greek language it is the hylos right here comes the greek hylos hylos means nothing but something which is shiny simple something which is shiny yes yes coming to that right where exactly they are present please wait so first because otherwise if i say okay it is present in say pinna and external auditory eustachian tube it's like a ratta patti right we don't want to do any of the rattafication right so all these questions please please hold those questions right i am i am trying to explain it in so that you don't have to ever cram any of these these things you watch it once you revise it once today before you go to sleep tomorrow morning you revise and that's it this this thing should be like a cement in your brain theek hai ha so where exactly are they present etc we'll come to that we'll come to that just hold it for a while because see पेशेंट वुड नेवर बी इंटरेस्टेड इन कि अच्छा बताओ हाई लाइन कार्टिलेज इज वेर इज इट प्रेजेंट फाइब्रो कार्टिलेज इज इन प्रेजेंट नो नो दे दे आर नॉट इंटरेस्टेड बट वेन यू आर लुकिंग एट द स्लाइड यू शुड नो दैट वॉट एग्जैक्टली इज गोइंग रॉन्ग राइट सो हेयर इट इज हाई लोज हाई लोज ट्राई टू क्रिएट ट्राई टू विजुअलाइज एज मच एज पॉसिबल दैट हाई लोज राइट इट इज समथिंग विच इज शाइनिंग now something have you seen the glass right when you go to buy a glass then one type of glass they say that it is transparent glass S straight away you can look through it but then there is another type of glass you know it is called as the translucent right translucent in in many of the five star hotels right there their bathrooms right washroom areas so they are with those translucent glass the world is trans translucent right do remember these words right they are not very difficult words in english language but technically speaking yeah tinted yeah right tilt so translucent means what translucent means that glass which is allowing the light but it is not allowing the shape technically speaking it allows light to pass through it right but it won't allow the shape to pass through it it means if there is a person who is standing behind the translucent glass you won't be able to make out the the silhouette or the shape of that person you'll you'll feel like yes there is someone but you won't be able to make out but light light would definitely pass this is in simple language sometimes we say semi transparent but yeah i was about to say right semi transparent but semi transparent is a, is a very jugad word right truly speaking translucent that is the precise scientific word over here in high line cartilage this is important because when you will see i'll show you the figure also i'll show you the pictures also because here what happens that when you this is this is like it is it is blurry right it is like a blur exactly like a butter paper very good right i i must write right this is similar to butter paper very good butter paper shabash right very nice <coughs> sorry just a minute okay. 
So here are the cells. Here are the cells, right? And in between, right, there are like say fibers, right? There is matrix, everything. But let me take you to physics now, right? In physics, in physics, there is one term which is called as the refractive, refractive index. There were three things, reflection, reflection, right? This is reflection. Reflection means when the light returns after bouncing from a surface, it is called as reflection. Refraction, that is ability of the light as it passes from one medium to another medium. So how we were experimenting? You know, we were experimenting it like, say, this is, this is where the water is, right? And then you put the light, this light would bend. And then once again, as it will go for, this is air, this is, this is water, this is air. So as light bends from, as it goes from one medium to another medium, that is called as the refractive index. And because we are talking about reflection, refraction, there was third thing, which was called as the diffraction, right? Diffraction. It has got nothing to do with right now, medical part, but still. Right? We love physics. So diffraction is when the when it is bent, when it is bent at an angle, right? As it touches the edge, right? Bending at an edge. At an edge, that is what is called as the diffraction. Well, our focus is on is on refractive index. Refractive index is important because it is due to this refractive index, we can really watch. Different, different structures as we'll be watching it under the microscope, right? Over here, we won't be able to see that, right? We won't be able to see that. So what exactly I'm trying to say? Remember one word, right? And it will be crystal clear. When we'll be watching, when we'll be watching the slide of high line cartilage, Right? When we'll be watching the slide of highline cartilage, it will, this ground substance, the matrix, that would be seen crystal clear, right? This would be absolutely clean, absolutely clean. Why? Because the refractive index of the fibers and the ground substance is same. So when the light would pass through it, right, light would come to our retina at the same angle, Right? So we won't be able to differentiate between differentiate between the ground substance and, and the matrix, uh, I mean the fibers. So here it is called as the ground substance or the matrix, it would be crystal clear simply because the refractive index is same. Right? Refractive index is same. Okay. Still, if it is not clear, don't worry, right? We'll we'll watch the image and it would be much better. Okay. What about the appearance of fibrocartilage? Right. Now these fibrocartilage, they are they are like white. Right? White. They are opaque. So light won't be passing through them. Right? Can we stay in the fibers to view under microscope? Good question, and we are coming to that, right? <coughs> so this is white, and this is it is opaque, right? And yes, we talked about it is strongest. We we talked about two colors. One was the white, and second one was yellow, right? So that's it. Elastic, they are yellow, right? And yes, they are also opaque. Now see, right now, so it is easy, right? So we'll say uh, fibrocartilages, they are white and elastic cartilages are yellow. In MBBS, the course is so much that as you progress at one point of time, even such questions, they become difficult. Because then if someone tells, care, fibrocartilage is yellow. I have studied it. 
and then we confuse really so let's leave everything means completely so so that we don't have to cram yeah. so speak like elastic right in a very stylish way like rajni khan right it is elastic right so now we know that it is yellow is elastic no one in the world can now misguide you right it is because it is elastic right and then why not to put here <laughs> yeah. so elastic bus done you have not learnt only the slide you have learnt even the type of fibers you'll be able to say so much because this is the keyword right and then obviously if you you are through with this rest is easy to remember right so no need to remember anything special for that fibro is white right? or or you people are creative the way you are you gave some name to that coracoid process like safed kawa white crow so similarly you can say is like white gunda hmm? so white fibro okay so this was physics so let's see in the page now we say that where exactly ha ah, by the way by the way i i'll use this much space for something very interesting now see in embryo right in embryo this high line cartilage right this high line cartilage is so important because it is the first cartilage it is in fact it is this cartilage which will form the first first skeleton right that there those micro small bones right when they are formed so first they are that that first skeleton that is laid by this high line cartilage then it goes for the ossifications and this is because it is from the cartilage it has got a very special name right it has got a special name and this name is what is called as the endochondral right endochondral ossification right this is where this is where actually the ossification occurs so as the embryo becomes mature as it becomes bigger as its age increases that is the age of that that uh, genius increases right so it leads to bone formations right but the beginning is with high line cartilage that entire process is also very interesting but right now we'll not be going into more detail we'll come to that at one point right today we'll touch it but then once again we'll go back to our original topic okay so this was just one important clue so for this high line cartilage eagerly waited question where exactly are they present right high line cartilage one remember articular cartilage right all the articular cartilage the joint formations right articular cartilage you will find it over there now articular cartilage it means what type freely moving joint right freely moving joint so because joint to it is it is formed even even say when we when we talk about say the knees right where where in between the meniscus is there or say our intervertebral discs right so they are also joint but not as freely movable as as the say shoulder or hella hip joints so articular cartilage is for long bones right remember the keywords articular cartilage long bones and freely moving joints you will also find it in ribs right ribs sternum right sternum also your nasal bones right nasal bones uh, i mean i mean the nasal cartilage not the bones i'm sorry nasal cartilage because the nasal bone is only this much but then the nasal cartilage right then the larynx larynx is your voice box and when we'll be studying larynx it is such a masterpiece because those small cartilages right they tune themselves in such a beautiful way right pulling and pushing those those 
vocal cords to generate various sounds right a highly sophisticated equipment <coughs> sorry plus you will find them into bronchi right bronchas bronchi trachea right because in trachea the identification is semi circular rings right if you if you really feel over here you'll be able to feel that cartilage because our trachea is something like this 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 these are the cartilaginous rings right and you will be able to feel when you when you roll your hand over right so so that is that is the trachea right huh. c shaped in the trachea yeah that's right it is c shaped c shaped <coughs> Say regarding the ear, ear is elastic, right? So elastic. So we'll 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 definitely be putting that elastic cartilage over there, you know? So high line cartilage is this. Elastic cartilage. Elastic cartilage is yes, all time favorite. Ha, coastal cartilage. That's right. You are you're, you're right. That is the coastal cartilage. Exactly. Something which is on the tips of the ribs. That is where it goes and meets the sternum. Right? Chalo, one question. Num write down number of ribs which are leading straight away to sternum. From which rib to which rib they land on the sternum and not on anyone else. Rib number one, two. Rib number one, two. Yeah. Okay. Okay. One, two, seven. One, two, seven. Good one. Good one. Good one. Very nice. Very nice. Nice, nice, nice. You guys study, study well. Very good. Very good. <coughs> So elastic cartilage, right? They are into this is called as pinna. Right? It is called as pinna. Pinna means auricle. Yeah, external ear, simply speaking, external ear. Right? Then external auditory meatus. Right? Auditory means means hearing. Meatus means whole. So this is the external ear. Right? External auditory meatus. That is that is with elastic cartilage. Then there is one very nice name. It is called as the Eustachian tube. Right? Eustachian tube. Eustachian tube is, is nothing but, right? Let's, let's write it over here. Right? Here is the ear. This is the external ear. Then it is divided into three parts. This is external. This is middle. Right? This is the middle. And this is the internal ear. Internal ear is all electronics, right? So where the signals are converted and then they are taken up, etc. Middle one is purely mechanical, malleus inca steps, uh, malleus inca steps. So bones are there. External ear, that is just sound, waves, right? So so those waves they reach and in between over here, that is what is called as the tympanic membrane, or what we classically call kanka parda, right? Tympanic membrane. Right, tympanic membrane. So that membrane vibrates all those malleusinca steps. They they dance and they send the things to internal. It is this Eustachian tube. Yes, you are right. It is this Eustachian tube. This is what connects to pharynx. Right, pharynx. Where as such we never even care about this Eustachian tube. Right, Eustachian tube. We never even think about it. But this is a beautiful mechanism by the God that there to balance the pressure into the middle ear. So when, when you are into the aircraft, right, as say when the aircraft goes at the height, it has to balance the pressure, right? It has to balance the pressure because external environment is completely different as compared to the internal atmosphere. So they have you have to they have to keep the internal atmosphere the most comfortable to you. But still Due to the pressure changes, those ears block. That's why what they give you? They give you sweets. They give you those chocolates. So chocolates will you will not swallow. 
right? You will chew. When you will chew, mucus means saliva will be formed. And when we swallow, it is at that time when, when things will be going via pharynx, it will lead to balance in the pressure. If this is not properly balanced, then it will lead to severe ear problem, right? Severe pain, right? Sometimes you must be feeling extensive pain as the flight approaches to the height, right? And, and when you swallow uh, your own saliva, you'll find ke haan, or you just pressure and release it, right? You'll find that popping sensation ke haan, ab, ab hai, right? Or they put ear plugs, right? So those ear plugs, they are over here. Right? When the ear plugs are there, so that means the pressure won't be affecting from the outer side. All these things just are for one purpose, that the pressure over here, it should be kept normal so that these bones, they are delicate bones, they work properly. It is this eustachian tube, right? It is this eustachian tube, which is elastic, which is yellow, right? The elastic. So that is our elastic eustachian tube, right? So that. Similarly, epiglottis, right? Epiglottis, right? Inside. <coughs> and then there is a very special cartilage. It is called as the arytenoid cartilage. Arytenoid cartilage. It is one of the cartilage of vocal cords. So as such vocal cords, right? The entire larynx, the complete, complete set, it is having hyaline cartilage. But this arytenoid cartilage which is which is like like heroine of of the entire movie right this arytenoid cartilage that is elastic right now things are easy almost everything covered so we have got now just one which is the white gunda right fibrocartilage so this fibrocartilage obviously strongest so let's put it at those places where the strength is required but not much of the movement, right? So here, first one, intervertebral discs, right? Intervertebral discs. So it will say, ki, yes, the pressure is needed but not much of the movement. Good. Second, very important, the pubic symphysis. Pubic symphysis. Where the two pubic bones meet, right? Where the two pubic bones meet, there is very less movement but the but the Strength should be there, right? So that is pubic symphysis. Then sternum, right? That's the sternum and the clavicle. Yes, your beauty bone, right? The sternum and the clavicle. The thing what is called is the sternoclavicular joint. So sterno, sternoclavicular joint, right? See all those areas, right? Sternoclavicular joint has to be strong because when you, you punch, right when you lift a weight it has to be transmitted to the to the central axis right so that's why sternoclavicular joint and those all time famous the knee meniscus what is meniscus meniscus means those cartilages which are between your femur and the tibia in between those cartilages, right? The, think of that, what pressure they are handling. So that's why it has to be strongest. This is where, this is where these are placed, right? Yeah, that's right. Intervertebral disc. <coughs> okay. Now, now let me first show you that image. And then we move to one superb story one superb story right and that story would tell you about so many things right very interesting story something which you must have done in diwali okay yeah here it is that's let me make it big difference between pinna and external determinators ha ha just a minute huh? i'll i'll tell you First, we just finish these images and then I'll, I'll talk about it, right? Just two minutes. See, first one is the highline cartilage. This is, this is one, this is two, this is three. Highline cartilage. Clearly, 
watch the watch this watch the matrix right it is that ground appearance the ground appearance crystal clear right we just cannot see the fibers and we just cannot see the any difference between the the ground material and and the and the fibers so here all these things what you are watching right all these cells they are nothing but chondrocytes right because we are watching the cartilages various types so all cells whatever right see see these cells these cells these cells these cells these cells all are chondrocytes simple so chalo that thing is not confusing at all classical appearance the ground matrix right this is clear this ground matrix ground matrix is clear and we know the reason we know the reason that refractive index was same as that of ground material and the fiber so it means fibers are not there they are there but the ground matrix and its refractive index is absolutely same so we are not just watching it by then in histology the normal dye which we are using to stain the slides it is called as the hne stain hematoxylin and eosino eosino eosin right it is called as the h and e right h and e hematoxylin is there any any brand right someone in in one of the viva is there any fashion brand like, name like h and e i don't remember yeah in one of the viva one student said that brand and and i said ki ha it's okay no but i think there is is there some brand fashion brand name similar to h and it is h and m exactly it is h and m yes and i granted it right and and <laughs> yeah h and m later on it it happened like my colleague now he was sitting on the next table he said jani have you have you realized what have you done maine kaha kya kya the usne h and m bola maine kaha nahi i was asking about the dye to kya ha it is h and e maine kaha ha to kehte no he said h and m maine usko bula hai maine kaha come here he said you said h and m to kehte yes sir then i was confused then then that my colleague said that it is a fashion brand and and this is what really happened right so the point is point is this takes to one thing say so in viva at times yes and it really happened at times when your teacher knows the answer even if, sometimes when you answer something which is very near to it na they'll say ki ha ha theek hi hai wohi bola hoga it it happens right but but now i know you won't be making mistake right so it is called as the hematoxylin and eosin and eosin this is the most standard dye most standard dye by which all the slides they are stained and in that it looks like this the trouble is not here here it is clear ground glass appearance <coughs> clear ground glass appearance so there is never a problem the problem comes when it comes to our decent elastic cartilage our stylish elastic right elastic this elastic will appear absolutely same as as our fibro cartilage when you stain it by h and e its appearance will be same as fibro so this bichara elastic so sharif but looks like a gunda right no doubt there are few because this is a very typical thing that's why those cells they are seen so you require now because this is one of the question and it is a very very important question that when you want to see elastic cartilage which dye will you be using yes very important question and that is what is called as the wernhoff wernhoff it is called as the wernhoff wernhoff stain right wernhoff stain or the full name is like wernhoff van giesen right wernhoff van giesen but if you say wernhoff that's more than enough so it is the wernhoff stain now this wernhoff stain is is unromantic dye right black and white right so completely it shows things in the form of black and white but well 
even black and white photography is is not bad right so you want to see how it really looks like see elastic cartilage here how it looks and as i put as i put our one half uh, I have, here it is see how smart it is right and this is where you will be watching yeah these are the fibers right see how fibers they are all those fibers they are laid right so here all these rich fibers right all these fibers see how how they are distributed so this is the one of van Giesen. so it is irregular fibers its speciality would be right irregular fibers it has to be irregular because its function is not strength but its function is elasticity elasticity so that's why those fibers they are irregularly situated and in between those cells are laid because fibers are irregular so all obviously the cells will also be dancing irregularly now against that that strong person right that strongest one fibro <coughs> high discipline right very high discipline so over here it is strong because fibers they are laid into one one line right they are arranged very properly they are arranged very organized so they are flat organized organized so when the fibers organized fibers and you will be able to see these fibers right see over here right? take this red color see these fibers right these fibers they all all are arranged so properly right in one direction that's the reason that that's how it is giving the strength right so it is giving the strength so even even the cells also will be line themselves because wherever the space is available cells will be laid so they are also arranged very properly so dense collagen fiber because then and then it can provide strength so it is not only dense it is well organized and flat and organized fibers and cells right organized cells that is what gives power that is what gives strength and it becomes the strongest right so this is how they all really look like now in this we said that this collagen is so important collagen is very important even for you right for everyone and collagen a very common question which is asked that what are the types of collagen and even even in our cartilage also that which type of collagen fiber they are into fibro and which type are in this that so many things right? let's learn it in a very easy way right hne stained for fibro that's right hne stained for fibro hne stained for high line right but for for only elastic elastic we have to go for a separate van hoff war hoff okay so collagen there are more than 28 types right 28 types so we just write, write a number but we need to know first five very properly so let's learn it in a easiest way type 1 2 3 4 and 5 right 5 you will remember it in next 2 minutes if you speak with me right so don't worry right you can shout also when we say 1 speak it like b1 b1 right first let me finish the whole thing right speak with me for the two speak like cartilage cartilage don't speak cartilage speak in style cartilage right so that is two three 
is re, right? So, 3 is reticular. So, we speak 3 reticular, right? 4 is floor. Floor means what? Floor means base. Okay? Jameen. Floor is base. And 5. 5. Right? It is placenta. <coughs> what we have done? What we have done is, these are the type of collagen present into various types of tissues and their, their distribution. Type 1 is in the bone, B1, right? So type 1 collagen fibers, they are into the bone. If they are into the bone, what type of cells? Obviously, osteoblast, right? Osteo, osteoblast, right? Because these are the cells which are forming the bone. Then immediately, right, our fibrocartilage will come into picture. Because I am the strongest. So don't put me under a lower category, right? Trabecular means fibers. Trabecular means fibers. So fibrocartilage. Fibrocartilage will say, okay, don't put me under lower category. I am as good as bone, right? So granted, so this is fibrocartilage. See, this is the reason, right? And you will remember, right? You will remember that fibrocartilage is strongest. The moment you have remembered it, we can very boldly write over here that this is with type 1 collagen. You know? No problems at all. It has to be type 1, right? Fibrocartilage. The next one. Cartilage, all the rest of the cartilages, right, they are type 2, right, they are type 2, because type 1 is the strongest, so it can resist tension, resist tension. Immediately after this, right, after this, I'll tell you a small story, right, literally your Diwali story, and you will learn the complete collagen synthesis so that you can answer even the USMLE questions. Right? That story, which will be of just two to three to five minutes, and you will you will know the entire collagen synthesis, and it will cover so many questions of USMLE, right? And the complete biochemistry, but you will never forget it. It is that easy. So this resistance, cartilage. What cartilage they do? They handle pressure, intermittent pressure, right? Intermittent pressure. So that is what it is handling intermittent pressure correct so that is cartilage the third one three is reticular fibers now these reticular fibers right as as you will if you are knowing well and good if not just trust me that these are the fibers reticular fibers remember it like respiratory system r for r right so just say respiratory system easy to remember when we say respiratory system, just put almost respiratory system, right? So that it would be into lungs, true. It would be into spleen. It would be into liver. It would be into cardiovascular system, almost everywhere, right? So this is, this is like very important collagen fiber, right? The fourth one, the thing with what I told you is floor. Floor means base. Base means basement membrane. For this basement membrane, when you'll be learning histology, you'll find that there is always a basement membrane, a membrane on which then the cells would be laid and those cells then they will be arranged in various fashion and will we'll keep on giving them the names. So whether it is stratified squamous or simple squamous or columnar that is what type of cell if they are like this so we'll be telling columnar if we find that yes they are exactly like cube so we say cuboidal if their nuclei they are flat so we'll call them the squamous right so all those words whether it is a squamous 
or it is cuboidal or it is columnar it is simply because of its shape right and then there would be pseudo right but basically all of them they are resting on what's called as the base and its full name is basal lamina or the basal membrane right so it is the basal membrane or the base or the lamina lamina means layer right lamina means layer this is because it is pertaining to cell that's why over here it is the basal layer basal membrane or the basal layer or the lamina right so that is the floor <coughs> and finally the placenta right mesenchymal cells you know what is mesenchymal right ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm so it is the middle layer mesenchymal cells that is the number five now think it like as you progress from top to bottom as you go from one to five as you go from one to five see what is happening right as you go from one to five the strength is decreasing see how it is nicely arranged right bone is the strongest next comes the cartilage then comes all the organs finally the delicate tissues and finally the most delicate placenta right so as it goes from top to bottom the strength strength drops strength drops right highest over here and lowest over here Think? so this makes entire process very easy the last topic for today it is about that how this collagen synthesis how how is it made now if i keep on telling you that okay there is glycine and then the hydroxylation and then vitamin c comes into picture and then glycosylation occurs then there are so many covalent bond forget no one remembers this right and and yes even if you remember it becomes a complete ratta so the best way to remember the collagen collagen synthesis right how this collagen is really formed and here is our diwali right what happens actually you we do it right some guest has arrived right when the guest has arrived so what we do pani piyenge right so we say will you have water right water chalo we are more scientific so let's instead of water can i write h2o h2 right theek and say we are not such bad people right we'll say ke acha chai coffee nahi nahi chai coffee nahi it is quite garmi garmi so how about lemon lemon right lemon nimbu sharbat yeah that is good right so and let's be bit more healthy then because it is diwali time so we offer some mithai hai na so we'll say sweets right have some sweets guest would be happy yeah right mithai khilai right and then all those mithais what you were telling on those days right what you were planning to send to joe biden right what were they kaju katri and 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 so many things you were telling right and then finally guest would say okay i i take leave and i go right so guests they go right they leave they say bye bye all right you have finished collagen synthesis trust me you have finished collagen synthesis fully how i chinta kar this g right g is the protein which is amino acid which starts with it it is the glycine right guest from gly glycine right glycine it is what it is amino acid it is amino acid this amino acid how it really looks like well it looks like an like this it is what is called as the alpha chain alpha chain it is a single chain right so one one glycine has come right this is our guest correct this amino acid which is like a single chain now you are doing you are telling that okay 
would you like to have water water so it is hydro hydro the process is called as a hydroxylation hydroxylation will remember it like hydro right hydro right this is the glycine so hydroxylation but this hydroxylation process won't be complete if you don't give lemon lemon means what vitamin c c friends Le vitamin c is important over here that's why it is said that amla amla right amla you have one amla you have at least a two lemon it is very important for your skin why they say that skin becomes more beautiful if you regularly consume vitamin c because vitamin c is one of the most important point that you have consumed water you have got enough of the glycine everything is there but vitamin c when it is not there right it gives the trouble vitamins when they are divided a d e k they are fat soluble right vitamin b complex and c they are water soluble even if you consume 20 lemons in one day they won't be stored they will be eliminated right vitamin a d e k they are stored into the body so for vitamin d deficiency to occur it takes some time but this is something which is needed daily that's why when you give electrolytes right during exercise when you drink electrolytes those electrolytes are having these important components it won't make any difference in one day or five day or in 10 days but regularly when you consume you'll find that gradually your efficiency is increasing this is the reason why discipline this is the reason why consistency is needed this vitamin c it plays a major role and in case if this vitamin c drops this is a question of us only what happens if there is deficiency of vitamin c it leads to scurvy scurvy right now scurvy is is a very dangerous situation right it is a it is a bad medical condition right scurvy in USMLE, they won't ask you this question. They'll ask, in scurvy, vitamin C deficiency occurs at which stage of collagen synthesis? And the options are given, that is when the glycine at the alpha chain, at the hydroxylation or glycosylation or the formation of covalent bonds. Khatam. Right? Now you are confused. There are such options. But now you know, because we offered lemon to the guest along with the water right so invariably vitamin c it goes with hydroxylation only one question down right moving on to the next question we offer sweets what is the use of vitamin in in stretch marks removal in gym uh, Shonak, uh send a mail right because its answer is very long it is not only the vitamin c but it is like hyaluronic acid and and plus one has to go for few some proteins also in the form of uh, <coughs> sorry uh, what protein i'm sorry uh, it slipped from my mind it slipped from my mind there, there is there is not whey protein uh, sorry sorry i'll just it will come in my mind i'll tell you so it is a combination no retinol link this is another thing Okay, chalo, come back. Let's come back to this. So sweets, right? So sweets means what? Glucose. You know? Sweet means glucose. So that is glucose. So we call it glycosylation, right? Remember glucose, right? Glucose. So it is called as the glycosylation. Glycosylation. So this glycosylation, it is doing what? Think it like if I come to your place and you offer me sweets and, and now you know me so well that I love sweets. You know? So will there be better bonding between me and you if you give me sweets? Right? But same thing happens over here. If the sweets are not given, to then okay, yaar, pani pila ke bhej diya. But if you give sweets, to then very happy. There is a stronger bonding. And that bond is so good. And that bond is like this. 
we know what is alpha chain right so i'll draw this thing so this is the alpha chain now there are multiple alpha chains right so there are so three alpha chains they are combined right so i'll draw them in a different color so this is one and then there is there is one another right and that alpha chain so three alpha chains combine so can we call it triple yeah what's the big rocket science in this this is triple this is helical formation right helical right so triple helix Thick. but these chains these chains they will be separate right if there is no bonding between them and that is where the water will come into picture right it is the hydrogen disulfide these are the bonds which are created right so it will generate the bonds these these links right these these chains they will be internally connected with with each other right they will be internally connected with each other so that the bonding between us becomes strong and that is the hydrogen bond hydrogen bond and the second one is disulfide right di sulfide so hydrogen disulfide bond they are created what if if this bond is not created well if the bond is not created so then theek hai i'll be okay but uh, our bonding would be imperfect it won't be that strong here is the thing it leads to condition what is called as the imperfecta name is there right imperfecta imperfecta osteo genetic genesis imperfecta that is the formation of bone which is not perfect right osteo genetic imperfecta or osteogenesis genesis hmm. imperfecta so improper bone formation because this collagen which is used even in the bone formation also so this is when it comes to osteogenetic imperfecta it is the triple helix formation which is not done properly bonds are weak and that's why the bones they will be very loose very soft so they won't be getting the strength right add one more thing to this this triple helix right it is triple helix still our full collagen is not 100% ready triple helix pro collagen right whenever we say pro collagen it means this is a stage which is just one step back for the final formation of the collagen right so this is triple helix pro collagen right from pro collagen it will lead to final collagen but when we say triple helix as pro collagen so we must give some name to this alpha collagen right alpha chain right this alpha so it is even one stage back so we say pre pro collagen right pre pro collagen now see how smart you look when you say that in stage 1 it is pre pro collagen which is in the form of a single alpha channel and later on it becomes a triple helix pro collagen where there is formation of hydrogen and disulfide bonds connecting all right someone would would faint but as such it's so simple you know just you have remembered that those guests came you have given them water lemon sweets strong bonds formed and things are going good you know let's add one more thing if at cellular level when you go this point this one these three steps they occur in reticular endothelial endothelium right that is the rough in fact it is rough right and endothelium reticulum that's the area there are two types rough and smooth endo endoplasmic reticulum right this is so step 1 step 2 step 3 they are in rough endoplasmic endoplasmic reticulum from this rough endoplasmic reticulum when it comes to the step 4 when the guests say that okay will go right will go so first 
they will go go into golgi body right so they will go into golgi body and from golgi body they will say okay cell bye bye right and they will leave the cell right they will leave the cell leave the cell right and that process is called as the exocytosis right exocytosis exit from the cell exit from the cell so then now the raw material is ready right raw material is ready that is what we have got pro collagen is ready but that's it now when we have to give someone so we give it in slightly sophisticated manner you know so so this is step 1 step 2 step 3 this is step 4 and uh, finally we have to give this collagen to to all those tissues ke chalo you make make the your respective bone or cartilage or tendon whatever you want to make make with it so first we say ke theek hai pro collagen has ever arrived but we need to cut some things right because ends are not that fine say so here it is one and then two and then say three and there are bonds in between bonds in between right in between everything is fine this is our pro collagen but no 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 they'll say this ye nahi chalega right we need to slice off we need to slice off the ends cut the ends right so it looks decent properly cut and this is what is called as the cleavaging right it is called as the cleavaging this is called as proteolytic proteolytic lysis means to cut lytic cleavaging right it is called as the proteolytic cleavaging now this proteolyte <coughs> sorry this proteolytic cleavaging so obviously now the piece is presentable it is ready right so this piece now we are calling it as tropocollagen right this is tropocollagen this tropocollagen it can absorb water but it is insoluble in water right and this is what we wanted that this is insoluble in water right so it can give good functions what we are expecting but still such bichare akele components what will they do right so here comes the last and the final step here is finely cut right these triple helix the tropocollagen one more right it is over here tropocollagen one more right it is connected the tropocollagen so such several pieces they form covalent bonds here 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 these are covalent bonds the question which is asked that covalent bond is formed bin between right between tropocollagens yes no or or in any of the form the thing is that these covalent bonds they are formed in between the tropocollagens and on top when we were watching about when we were watching about these hydrogen disulfide bonds they were forming within the triple helix they were forming within the triple helix that was forming between the alpha chains right three alpha chains in between they are connected one unit slice right so that is proteolytic cleavaging and then tropocollagen formed this is one tropocollagen this is another tropocollagen this is third tropocollagen and then they combine right and that is what is forming the final collagen this is leading to that final collagen now this is where you can be asked two questions one this process requires a very specific enzyme a very specific enzyme and this is lysyl oxidase lysyl 
oxidase. Whenever it comes to ACE, A -S -E, that means it's an enzyme, lysine oxidase. But in order to work for this lysine oxidase properly, you require copper. This is what is called as the micronutrient. Right? Why it is necessary that only taking lemon or sometimes we require these micronutrients in the form of tablet. Right? So this is where the copper is must. In absence of copper, this final stage won't work properly. So that is where the copper is needed. Bus done. That's it. This is the story of collagen. Right? So that's how this entire process it goes on. Right. So that's it for today. And it was pleasure talking to you. In fifth step, procollagen itself is called osteogen. No, 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 no. See, osteogenesis imperfecta is a medical condition. Imperfect bone formation. This is a disease. This is the abnormality. Right. It's good that you asked. This is a normal thing. Why, why it occurs? It occurs if for some reason there is no formation of this hydrogen disulfide bonds. So if they are not formed, that strong linkage bit and, and leading to the formation of this triple helix, that won't occur. Right? And it will be. Revision, Jaydev? Yes, sure, sure. Chalo. Let's go for uh, high-speed revision. Right? As usual, always... Five minutes, right? We start the timer. Okay. So we'll talk about cartilage, right? Greek name, chondro, connective tissue. It is having cells, chondrocytes, fibers, white and yellow, matrix, which is like a gel-like substance, which will be connecting all of them together. This is rich in mucopolysaccharide. Mucopolysaccharide. Right. Mucopolysaccharide, aka also known as right glycosamine glycans, right? And these are all very romantic people, right? Just sugar couples, S1, S2, S1, S2, and holding their hands and then making a long chain, right? And that is two sugars, we give them a good name, and that is the disaccharide, right? They are present in, right? They are present in mucus, synovial fluid and the cartilage, right? Cartilage in which we are most interested. This mucopolysaccharide, going into slightly more detail, that is the chondroitin sulfate, which is most abundant in human body, present in cartilage, present in bone, tendon, and these are the long chains of disaccharide, two sugars. Over here, heparan sulfate, right? That is for the cell for proliferation and which is on the cell surface. Two sugars, right? Both, both these are uronic and amino sugars right and they form molecular pair and which attracts water and that is what makes them a good component for synovial fluid for the lubrication and the shock shock absorption right nucleus pulposus what we talked about which bears the shock right between between two vertebras cartilage they don't have blood supply they don't have nerve supply right but blood supply is not there so that they get their nutrition via <coughs> diffusion, right? Nerve supply, so they are insensitive. Bone has got periosteum, so similarly, cartilage has got perichondrium, right? This is with fibrous membrane and it is absent in articular cartilage, right? Over here, cartilage, they have got chondrocyte. When they die, when the chondrocytes die, they lead to calcification, deposition of calcium and they are replaced by bone-like tissue or the bone-like structure. Right, bones which are hard, calcium salts are present. Right, they have got good, rich blood supply. They have got good nerve supply. Our cartilage, which is firm, but no calcium salts. Right, and there is no blood supply and there is no nerve supply. Highline cartilage, they are very shiny. Came from the name halos. Right, halos is Greek word. That is, it makes it translucent. Translucent means light can pass, but shape won't be seen and exactly what you said like butter paper right so fibrocartilage strongest white opaque elastic they are so flexible yellow opaque so we call them elastic right this was about the refractive index that is when the light bends from bending of the light when it passes from one medium to another medium in case of highland cartilage they both refractive index of the 
ground material and the fiber is same so that's why we won't be able to see it separately right in embryo interesting thing is this is just the extra piece of information embryo hyaline cartilage that is the first skeleton which is laid endochondral ossification it is said hyaline cartilage articular cartilage long bones ribs sternum nasal and the larynx basically freely moving joint right bronchi tracheae even there you can feel it right elastic cartilage pinna pinna is the external ear right external auditory meatus that is the inside that hole and and then the cartilage which is around it eustachian tube middle ear right epiglottis and the arytenoid cartilage one of the cartilage of larynx fibrocartilage intervertebral disc pubic symphysis sternoclavicular joint and knee meniscus because they are the strongest right that was the position of eustachian tube where the pressure balance is more important right this is where the ground matrix and because of h n e stain hematoxylin and eosin this fibrocartilage right they are flat dense organized cells type 1 collagen right and yellow elastic h n e same as it looks like same as the fibro but one of van giesen stain is needed and this is how it looks like those irregular fibers and that gives elasticity type 1 2 3 4 5 collagen that is b1 bone cartilage reticular fibers from the respiratory system lung spleen liver cvs floor is base so basal layer and five is placenta that is the mesenchymal right that's was the basal and collagen synthesis the easiest and the best the guest is our glycine amino acid alpha chain and that is the single layer which is called as the pre pro collagen right let's offer water that is hydroxylation but vitamin c is needed else person goes for what's called as the scurvy right offer sweets so that is called as the glucose gluco glycosylation right glycosylation and then in the glycosylation that is hydrogen bond hydrogen disulfide bond is formed and it leads to triple helix pro collagen right in case if this goes wrong it leads to abnormality called osteogenesis imperfecta imperfect formation of the bones first three processes they occur in rer rough endoplasmic reticulum then it goes to golgi body it right? goes to golgi body before it leaves the cell and this process is called as exocytosis right leaving the cell now we need to make the final product so that's why all those improper ends they are cut off and that process is called as proteolytic cleavaging so everyone is made of the same size and that is called as the tropo collagen that is our raw material because it is properly cut now it is insoluble in water and then we connect all of them with what's called as the covalent bond and that leads to formation of the final collagen for this process to occur lysyl oxidase is needed which is an enzyme but don't forget the very important copper right because it will support this completion of this process so i have saved the file just it took 6 minutes to complete this entire revision right but you will be able to do it much faster okay so thank you so much and i enjoyed it today thank you and see you tomorrow same time right uh thorax thorax cells that i'll let you know right just i'm trying to manage some work but i'll definitely start thank you so much and see you tomorrow bye bye